there's as much water inside the earth as there is in all of its oceans. That's the conclusion that scientists are reaching after a 2014 discovery planted the seed of the idea. But first, let's get a refresher on the layers of the earth. And the moment he says, let's get a refresher on the layers of the earth, images from your social studies textbook or your geography textbook in terms of a, of a what should we say, a cross section of the earth showing you the crust. I mean, it should simply come to mind. See, one really effective thing while reading is, if you can also attach visualization to the reading that you do, you pick up stuff much faster. You're able to get the context much clearer. And when he says refresher, he's clearly saying, this is something you guys know. I'm just reminding you of it. So what do you know about the layers of the earth? Cross section straight away, isn't it? But first, let's get a refresher on the layers of the earth. The part of the planet we deal with most of the time is the crust. And you know, that's the uppermost layer. That's about 30 miles thick at its biggest. Beneath that is a mantle which itself is made of three different sub-layers, the upper mantle, the transition zone, and the lower mantle. Together, they are about 1800 miles thick, and they make up about 84% of the planet's volume. That means these three mantle layers. Down beneath the mantle is the core, but it's a mantle that you will find our secret sixth ocean. Okay, so now you've got the cross-section, and you know somewhere in those three layers in the mantle is this water that he's talking about. So how did they find the ocean? The clue came in the form of a brown diamond that formed about 400 miles below the, beneath the crust. That's not where they found it though. Sometime in the past, volcanic forces had pushed the diamond to the surface where a team discovered it in Brazil. Within that diamond, they found another mineral, ringwoodite, which is notable for its tendency to absorb surrounding water. The chunk of ringwoodite was comprised of, of about 1.5% water, which means within that diamond is a mineral that actually holds water and that substance, that, that, that mineral is comprised of 1.5% water. That particular chunk then won't quench your thirst. That particular chunk they found wouldn't have enough water for you to quench your thirst. But it suggests that wherever it came from, there's a whole lot more to be found. In other words, down there 400 miles below the surface of the earth, this particular mineral is encased in diamonds of some sort. And this mineral is capable of holding 1.5% of its body in the form of water. Now, when he says tendency to absorb surrounding water, then you realize the mineral is creating the water in its molecules. It's not as if it has a little cavity in which the water exists because absorbing water is like a sponge. Now, when you say, or like, like cotton, now when cotton absorbs water, you're saying that all the molecules of cotton actually in some sense are suffused with water and therefore they hold the water. And then when you squeeze, you get it out. So the, obviously he's talking about something that works like moistening itself and holding water. And therefore, it's not about a body of water. One thing we should possibly make clear, just because there is so much water underground, that doesn't mean it's necessarily sloshing around like it does on the surface. But then we just explained that. For it to be sloshing around, it has to be a body of water. And he's clearly talking about moist minerals and not water bodies as such. Instead, much of it may be trapped in ringwoodite like the chunk the researchers found. So the mineral must be moist. But we do know exactly where in the mantle it's located. It's widely accepted that the upper and lower mantles are bone dry, but the wateriness of the transition zone has been the subject of some debate. Now, scientists are quite certain that the transition zone is about as wet as it could be, which means the ringwoodite or the diamonds that encase the ringwoodite and the ringwoodite, which is basically a substance that could be moist, are found where in the transition zone. That means the middle of the three layers of the mantle. So now when he says that the sixth ocean is much below the surface. He's not really saying that there's a water body. He's saying there is enough moisture to be found in the third, in the middle layer of the mantle to actually, if at, extracted, give you the volume of water that will form another ocean. Okay. And when he says, uh, when he's talking about the amount of water we're talking about, he actually says that there's as much water inside the earth as there is in all of it. That means what you can probably extract. From, so the scientists believe that what you can probably extract from ringwoodite is going to be as much water as the Earth's oceans, the Earth's five oceans actually hold. Okay, so now we are clear. So which of the following is the main theme of the passage? It's basically to tell us and to discuss the possibility that water could actually be in large volume in the form of moisture in mineral in the central layer of the mantle of the Earth. So which of the following is the main theme? To throw a light on the ongoing debate around the wateriness of the transition zone inside the mantle, 
to throw light on the ongoing debate now to throw light on the ongoing debate would tell us what the opposing sides of the debate are and what it is that their standpoints are and what their analysis and their own reasons are that would be to throw light on a debate no it's to throw light on a possibility to discuss the theory of a large amount of water inside the earth large amount of water in what form in the form of moisture but then that's larger water water anyway for instance water vapor we know is not fluid water but you said there's water in the air so to discuss the theory of a large amount of water inside the earth is possible let's keep that aside for the moment to discuss how the formation of diamonds can give clues about the inner layers of the earth no this is not relevant we are not talking about any diamond we are talking about diamonds that might contain ringodite and not just about any inner layer of the earth ringodite pointing to the fact that a particular layer of the earth might actually have moisture so c is not right to highlight the presence of a large water body below the crust no to highlight the presence of a large volume of moisture maybe and it's not a large body of water because it's not in the form of water in a pool or in a lake or in a pond right so b then is your answer to 7 now if you look at question 8 which of the following is not a likely inference which can be drawn from the passage not a likely inference the mantle comprises a wet sublayer sandwiched between two bone dry, bone dry sublayers we've been told that that means there are three layers the top and the bottom being bone dry and the one in the middle being the transition one which could is normally considered to be holding moisture subterranean water may not be in free flowing form we know that it's going to be in the form of moist mineral not free flowing form scientists think that the secret sixth ocean is as big as the other five combined and he puts a secret sixth ocean in brackets to, in in to quote to tell you he is only using the term the author used it's not actually a water body so let's go with that so that amount of water is as much as the other five combined has been told to us at the start of the passage itself the information about where a diamond is found isn't as useful as the information about where it was formed he only tells us that the diamond was found on the surface but it was formed 400 feet below so that means where it was formed i mean how it was formed is actually uh, useful where it was formed is useful because it tells us that it was in that particular transition layer but where it was found over here we are saying it's not useful but he's not discussed whether that is useful or not in fact if you think about it realize that where it was found if you find it in brazil then it's very likely that it was pushed up from the earth below brazil which means somewhere down there is actually where it is 400 feet down there is where the indications of let us say water content could be so there is no di comparative discussion of what about the information where the diamond is found what do we use how how can we use that that is not discussed so we can't make a comparison saying we don't know whether it is useful or not but there isn't enough to say it isn't as useful so this is not a likely inference d would be your answer to 8 and 9 which of the following is not an assumption made in the various arguments presented in the passage not an assumption 1.5% water for ringodite is a lot of water because you can recognize that he is assuming that 1.5% of water in ringodite is actually going to amount to being enough water to be able to compare with the water that we have in our five oceans so 1.5% water for ringodite is a lot of water that's an assumption made the water composition of ringodite inside the diamond did not change once the latter had been formed because the diamond enclosed the ringodite in its moist form and therefore we know the formation of the diamond didn't change that structure so that's also an assumption if there is water inside a diamond containing ringodite there must be water outside it no we can't tell all we know is that the ringodite is the mineral that is encased in the diamond we don't know whether there is actually water either sloshing around outside the diamond or even moist mineral outside the diamond because all the moist mineral could very well be within the diamonds that we found now it doesn't have to be the case but the fact is there's not enough here to say that we are assuming that there is no water on the outside we are not there's not even enough to say we are assuming there is there is water outside that part is not discussed at all, at all so we can't look at it as an assumption that there is water outside if there is water inside okay the transition zone can be found at 400 miles from the crust that is actually something that has been told to us because if the diamond was found 400 miles below and the diamond came out of the transition zone then we realize that the transition zone must be 400 miles below the earth so uh, below the earth's crust so see then is your answer to 9